I own every single Kino Lorber 4K Blu-ray release. Let's talk about it. What is up everybody, I am Mason from the Mock Buster YouTube channel and as of recording this, we are currently in the Kino Lorber uh, spring sale. Usually it's March into April or April, spring into April sale, but we're having the spring sale currently. So a lot of really cool deals, some really good deals. I think like $12.99 4Ks, $13.99 4Ks to $17.99 4Ks. Same with Blu-rays, a lot of $5.99, $6.99, $7.99, $9.99 Blu-rays, which are really cool, especially for boutiques. So if you haven't checked that out, I'll put the link in the description to the actual sale if you are interested in some of these titles and some of these things I'm going to be talking about. Now not all of these 4Ks are going to be on sale just based on stock and that kind of stuff so but I, I'll, I will show you every single 4K uh, that Kino Lorber has released and so I'll talk to you about each individual release, where I got them, how I like the movie, how I like the transfer so sit back, relax, get yourself something to drink because this is going to be a longer video. We're not going to just you know pussyfoot around these. Uh, films I want to really talk about them and really talk about the transfer because I just love Kino Lorber as a collection as a boutique release because uh, it's kind of a no frills kind of uh, boutique release you know uh, you get you get the film you get it in a really good transfer you get some really good artwork to it sometimes there's fantastic bonus features sometimes there isn't but for the most part MSRP it's pretty affordable $29.99 for a 4k blu-ray here in Canada so I'm guessing in the US that's what what $24 $25 for 4k which is really good a lot of it actually is you know for a boutique release usually you expect a higher price but for some of for, for Kino Lorber they charge sometimes lesser than like a, a studio release like Top Gun Maverick right now is $34 but I can get a Kino Lorber for $29 for so you know which one would I want better so anyways we're gonna get into every single Kino Lorber 4k release ever and I have all slip covers with them some of them are custom because you know some of them are out of print shit uh, because I decided to collect all of the Kino Lorbers maybe six months ago seven months ago you know I've been I've been collecting them categorically as they came out because there's a there is a lot of fantastic cinema in the Kino Lorber collection but I really wanted to take it seriously and, and have that kind of collection that I own a lot of because I know a lot of people buy you know every single Scream Factory release with a slip cover every single steel book that comes out but for me you know I like to be modest with myself and know what I like and I you know for the most part Kino Lorber absolutely fantastic lineup of films so why not add that it makes collecting more fun too it gives me kind of a, a motive a kind of a drive to you know collect more and to come out of my comfort zone because a lot of these films in this collection were films I would have never ever would have popped in my player I would have ever spent money on but you know but those are also movies that I hadn't seen yet that I was having these predisposed uh, opinions on without even watching them so you know having this kind of challenge for myself really helps me step out of my comfort zone and discover cinema discover films that I would have never discovered in the first place so let's get it started with the first Kino Lorber 4k release ever released and that came out on April April 30th 2019 starting off with funnily enough Hannibal on 4k blu-ray for some reason I don't know why this came out first you know a lot of people say this is the lesser of the three movies this being Silence of the Lambs Hannibal and Red Dragon now I know Red Dragon was announced last year we still haven't gotten any news any you know what the artwork artwork will look like but if you go to Kino Lorber's Facebook page on their banner it does show you know the picture of uh, Anthony Hopkins as Hannibal Lecter with, you know, Sansa of the Lambs, uh, Hannibal, and then Red Dragon. So Red Dragon is coming out soon. At the end of this video, I will be talking about all the upcoming releases that I am really excited for. So yeah, Hannibal on 4K Blu-ray. Is it the greatest film of all time? No, I do enjoy it for what it's worth. This was one of the first kind of horror movies that I saw as a kid. It came out in 2001, so around that time when I was discovering uh, horror films while I was one years old. But you know, those early 2000s film that kind of, you know, uh, osmosis over to the or mid 2000s to the late 2000s when all the kids like my age were getting into horror films, films like this, films like the Friday the 13th films and the Nightmare on Elm Street films, even though these are kind of more smarter films, I guess, because a lot of people don't like to classify these kind of um, films as horror. They kind of like to classify them more as psychological thriller, which I do understand. But, um, 
you know, uh, I think it's okay. You know, replacing Jodie Foster with uh, Julianne Moore it was a bit of a, like, what the fuck, really? Uh, it doesn't really feel the same, even though Anthony Hopkins is here. The shot, the shot composition itself isn't the greatest. Uh, it really doesn't utilize the composition of showing Hannibal, because if you watch the uh, Silence of the Lambs, the way it's shot is very d menacing, very, uh, it makes, you know, Hannibal Lecter, Anthony Hopkins himself more menacing, because at that time he was in his mid 50s and there was very a lot of close-ups low angle shots of him where he's looking down on you to have this have this more uh, you know really angry very scary demeanor here there's a lot of wide shots a lot of far back shots of just a 68 year old 65 year old anthony hopkins walking around so it's not as uh, scary and it's not as psychologically impacting but i think for what it is i enjoy it i i, I love gary oldman's character when he gets his face almost ripped out and then he has a weird work like Corel, Corel. so it's it's a it's 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 a crazy movie i had to add to the collection because i just love me some hannibal Lecter. i don't know what to tell you so yeah this is more of the kind of horror uh you know kind of steering away from the psychological thriller but as the 4k as itself it's a pretty good looking 4k quite the noticeable uptick when compared to that standard blu-ray especially for this having a lot more practical effects when it comes to gore and blood and those kind of stuff you really notice that more a lot of darker scenes this does have dolby vision hdr so the black levels are very nice and inky a lot of detail is retained within this transfer so overall this is a fantastic release absolutely love it i'm so glad i got it with the slip cover shout out alex over at at cinema inspired this is a harder and harder to come by especially here in canada where if you do find it, it's going to be hella expensive so the first kino lobo release was hannibal on 4k blu-ray uh, a divisive film but you can device on or you can argue that the transfer itself is really really good looking fantastic upgrade over the blu-ray with a really good looking dolby vision transfer especially if you're a gore hound and you love to see that gushy intestines and blood and all that kind of stuff looks fantastic on 4k blu-ray the next release came out over a year later on November 24th, 2020, and that is the release of the first Mad Max film on 4K Blu-ray. This is an absolutely stunning transfer. I absolutely love it. This is the same transfer they ported onto that big kind of anthology set that came with uh, all of the films, including Fury Road, but that's why I kind of held off on buying this itself. I love the artwork. I love the slipcover on this, but I'm like, I already have the anthology series, but once so I decided I wanted to uh, collect all the Kino Lorber 4Ks. I decided to pick it up. I got it for like 28 bucks, so that was really cool. Uh, but yeah, Mad Max, my favorite film of the series, George Miller classic. Now this does come with more uh, bonus features than some other ones. It comes with audio commentaries, uh, interviews, uh, a lot of interviews. Mel Gibson, Birth of a Superstar, because this is one of his earliest films, if not his first film. I could be wrong on that, but uh, an early, an early Mel Gibson film when he's in his like really early 20. I think he's like 20 two in this uh Mad Max, the film phenomenon, trailers from hell, uh, original Australian and US English dub audio, theatrical trailer, TV spots, radio spots. So it is chop full of bonus features and it's a great price, $29.99, fantastic film. In my opinion, my favorite uh, Mad Max movie, I know a lot of people really love Road Warrior, a lot of people really love uh, Fury Road, but for me, I just love the heart in this. I love the kind of basis and reality before it goes batshit insane. You need Mad Max one before getting into Mad Max 2 but as the beginning of a series as a 4k blu-ray I can't I can't say that this is no, nothing less than perfect this is a must own if you if you don't own the Mad Max uh, movies on 4k I'd highly recommend you pick this up one of my biggest recommendations this isn't available on the sale right now but hopefully one day it will be I don't know if this is out of print or not but had to get it with the slip cover Mad Max's release on 4k blu-ray from Kino Lorber absolutely fantastic blows the original blu Blu-ray out of the water, uh, fully cleaned up, and not in the sense of DNR, but in the sense of that they actually took the actual film negatives, really scrubbed it up, removed all the dirt, grime, degradations, those kind of things. And this is far from being a lazy transfer. I've seen some really lazy transfers from other companies that we're not going to get into because we're here to praise Kino Lorber, but. Um, I can't gush over this uh, this release enough. If you can get it for a good price, you need to snag this, especially with the slipcover, because that artwork is absolutely beautiful on there. So, yeah, can't recommend Mad Max enough.
And then the third release that came out on April 13th, 2021. So they were really spreading out these original releases, I guess because this was, I guess, the beginning of COVID and that kind of stuff in the lockdown. So I'm guessing distribution was a lot harder to do. But yeah, April 13th, 2021, the almost two year anniversary of Kino Lorber doing 4Ks. And that is the third release from Kino Lorber. And that is Spaceballs on 4K Blu-ray. Now this is a custom slip cover I made because I think those original pressings had uh, slip covers for it, but um, after that, you know, it was gone. They don't they don't really do reprints. They kind of do reprints for their Blu-rays. I know uh, what's it called? I know Oblong Box came out first when it first came out. I don't think it had a slip cover, and then they re-released it with a slip cover. But uh, but for this release uh, for 4Ks, they don't really like to do re-releases on uh, with slip covers just for the slip covers because what's the point? Honestly, it's still the same disc. If they're not doing a new transfer or whatever, then what's the point? Uh, but yeah, Spaceballs on 4K Blu-ray, uh, the third release from Kino Lorber. An interesting story about this movie is that I got this on the sale last year, and actually, I when I when I first watched this, I was a little kid, and I actually watched this before I watched Star Wars, which is an insane thing to say because I know a lot of people say, yeah, but this is a what's it called? It's a Mel Brooks classic parody on the Star Wars franchise. I never watched Star Wars before watching this, so I I came into this blind, and I loved it, and I'm like, oh, that was a really cool sci-fi comedy film and then I watched Star Wars I'm like hey this is like Spaceballs and not realizing that this is what that's what I was based on because I was a fucking kid who the hell absolutely love this release one of my favorite Mel Brooks Mel Brooks films a classic this is always on TV so when I saw it when I saw this in the wild when I saw it on sale I was like I had to pick this up and I had to make a slipcover for it because it's out of print uh, and I just re I just really love making slipcovers I don't know what to tell you and you know when it comes to uh, the transfer itself fantastic transfer new 4k restoration uh, with Dolby Vision I can't stress this enough how fantastic these transfers look it even has the new restoration on the blu-ray because I know a lot of a lot of other releases sometimes they'll give you the 4k blu-ray I know with Independence Day it gave you the new 4k blu-ray but then it gave you an older standard blu-ray I think same with Jurassic Park and never gave you the new 4k restoration on the blu-ray uh, which is weird I don't know why they don't do that but Kino Lorber if you if you if you want want to future-proof yourself, you love Mel Brooks, and you love Spaceballs, even if you don't have a 4K player, I highly recommend you get this because you're still going to get that 4K restoration on the Blu-ray disc. And then if you one day you want, you decide to either upgrade to 4K or you buy a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox One X or whatever, or an Xbox Series X, uh, you can always pop this in and really discover. Now, you won't get the, the, the experience of Dolby Vision, but it's still going to look a lot better. Uh, so yeah, Dolby Vision, fantastic Spaceballs, the third release in the Kino Lorber 4K release. Absolutely love this film. And then this is the most highly debated release of them all. Released on April 27th, 2021. That is the fourth 4K release from Kino Lorber and that is The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Obviously, this is my own custom slip cover, but I remember when this came out, a lot of people were really divided on this 4K release. You know, the fantastic image quality is there. A lot of really good detail. A lot of people didn't really like the um, the color timing, the orange kind of hue to it that a lot of people didn't like because it did have a colder kind of look on the standard Blu-ray, which was fixed with this. And I remember a lot of people really kind of being like, why isn't there any HDR? There's no HDR on this. But, you know, you do get that 4K scan of the original camera negatives and you get a fantastic, fantastic audio soundtrack. I forgot to mention the audios on the other ones. Those are also really fantastic. I'm more of a visual guy. I put a lot of more of my eggs in the visual basket as compared to the um, audio basket. But because um, that's one of the main things that you will immediately notice unless you have like a really, really expensive setup. I have a pretty decently priced setup, but yeah, uh, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, one of the greatest westerns of all time. Uh, not the best in the trilogy in my opinion. I still really love me some Fistful of Dollars, just in my opinion, but this, I can pop in anytime and watch it, and the pacing is fantastic. I mean, for being a long ass, really, really long movie, or if it's a pretty, it's a decently long movie, uh, it goes by really quickly, and it's just fantastic. Really good music. I mean, what, what can I say that hasn't already been said about The Good, The Bad, and the ugly for Christ's sake is one of the most iconic films of all time but uh and the 4k release is absolutely fantastic uh, I know a lot of people had issues with the color timing and the fact that there's no HDR but 
overall the detail uptick is there and it's still a definitely big upgrade compared to the old blu-ray that i had because i wasn't keeping up with all the blu-ray releases because you know, if i already own it on blu-ray i'm not going to buy it again on blu-ray unless it's like a special super duper special you know anniversary edition uh but for the most part i had that old blu-ray from like 2006 or something and it looked terrible so compared to that this is night and day so another movie really sought after for the slip cover uh unfortunately i wasn't able to get it but honestly i kind of like this artwork better and i think it suits it more than that old uh because there is that that original artwork was from the italian uh poster and that does look really cool it's just it's a little bit basic with just you know having you know lee van cleef uh eli wallach and uh clint eastwood on the front but this has more of an artistic standby to it so yeah uh the fifth release right the fifth release uh 4k release from kino lorber the good the bad and the ugly nice nice next we're getting into my first ever kino lorber 4k pickup now this was a movie i just wanted on 4k as soon as i saw it i picked it up i got it used for like I think 15 bucks and I didn't really know what Kino Lorber was. I knew it was a boutique uh, label, but I didn't really read too much into it. This is when I first started collecting 4K Blu-rays and I did get this with a slip. I know this is out of print, I think. And this was, let me see if I can read. And this was released on October 12th, 2021. Perfect for Halloween. And that is a misery on 4K Blu-ray. I feel like this is a lot of people's uh, first Kino Lorber 4K pickup, just because I know it's, it's such an iconic film, a Stephen King adaptation. James Caan is fantastic in this, but Kathy Bates just steals the show. Uh, I can't, Rob Reiner, fantastic. You can't really go much about it, but as a transfer itself, also really fantastic. You know, Dolby Vision, HDR lossless audio soundtrack it looks fantastic sounds fantastic if you can get with a slip cover absolutely amazing love the artwork that they chose with this release uh, again um in the ways of the special features, it does come with audio commentaries from director and the audio commentary with the screenwriter, Misery Loves Company, which is just a featurette, behind the scenes featurette, Mark Scheiman's musical Misery Tour, which I love. I love the artwork, or I love the art of, you know, film, music in film and the soundtracks and how they affect the film, especially when it comes to thrillers and horror movies like, like Misery. Advice for the stalked featurette, uh, profile of a stalker featurette, celebrity stalkers featurette, anti-stalking laws featurette, okay and seasons greetings and theatrical trailers so a lot of cool uh, a lot of cool kind of psychology behind the filmmaking of this movie uh, not much of when it comes to the actual behind the scenes and that kind of stuff but it does come with a lot of cool stuff that kind of takes you behind the the kind of mentality of what the film was trying to go for you know talking about you know pro you know stalkers in general celebrity stalkers and then anti-stalking laws so yeah when it comes to that Pretty good, pretty decent release. Uh, image quality is fantastic. You're not gonna get the most when it comes to bonus features, but it's a really amazing film. You know, steals the show. Kathy Bates, absolutely fantastic. I remember watching this when I was like, in, I think I was like 14 years old um, when I watched this for like a book report or something. I was comparing the book to the movie and I chose Misery, I think Silence of the Lambs and The Shining. And you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a decent adaptation. Love this film in general. I love it more than the book actually. And I read both and I read, read the book and watched the movie so misery on 4k blu-ray absolutely love this release and i highly recommend it speaking of another book to film adaptation we got the 1991 psychological thriller oscar winning movie uh this was released on october 19th 2021 native 4k dolby vision fantasticness silence of the lambs on 4k blu-ray absolutely love this movie i really do enjoy the transfer i heard a lot of people talking about how the, the the kind of dolby vision kind of messes with the um just the color timing and making things look too dark i didn't notice that again but i'm watching i usually watch movies on my 65 inch oled tv in the pitch black of night with the curtains closed so i don't really notice those kind of things it's not like heat where it's extremely noticeable you know obviously it's gonna be a tad darker with the hdr but you do get the extremely extremely rich colors that 
that comes with Dolby Vision. Uh, this is one of those releases that are give or take because the Criterion release that I think has the same 4K restoration is also fantastic. So uh, it depends on whether you have the movie or not. I only had this on Blu-ray, like not the Criterion Blu-ray, but just a normal studio release Blu-ray from MGM. But um, the 4K looks fantastic in my opinion. I love the audio on this. Um, and the artwork itself also you're paying for that kind of nice stuff. And it's not like a premium. Again, $29.99 new MSRP. Uh, you get the slip cover with it. A must own, honestly. If you if you don't already own the Criterion, I feel like you can give or take with this one because it is, a real, it is really divisive when it comes to this transfer. I myself personally, as a fan of Sansa Lambs and as a fan of 4K and Dolby Vision and a person who doesn't own the Criterion, I highly recommend uh, Sansa Lambs on 4K. Also, it's probably cheaper than the, the Criterion for uh, Criterion Blu-ray anyways. Because I think that's like a set or something. And then the next release released on November 23rd, 2021, 1978's Invasion of the Body Snatchers, native 4K transfer with Dolby Vision. I am extremely ecstatic that a lot of these releases did get uh, 4K, obviously 4K restorations, but I mean Dolby Vision transfers. This one looks absolutely freaking fantastic. And they also announced they're doing the original Invasion of the Body Snatchers because this is the remake. I personally like the uh, the remake because I just love films made in the 70s. I love that kind of aesthetic, that kind of vibe that comes to not low budget, but you know, moderately modest, just, you know, not, re I guess remaking, but like, you know, being more creative than using the standard tropes of that time. Time. Absolutely love this film, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. This does have reversible artwork, which I will show here uh, because I still wanted to take them out of the thing and show you because there's no point really. Uh, same with The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly has reversible artwork. Uh, I don't think the other ones do though. But yeah, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Love this movie. I prefer than the, I prefer this one over the original. And it's a great looking 4K Dolby Vision. You can't really go wrong. Now I'm reading here this did get a original Scream Factory Blu-ray release. And I haven't watched that so I don't know how the visuals compares to this. But this is a great uh, looking 4K. Um, it's not the best when it comes to audio wise. It still does the job very soon serviceable it sounds good but it doesn't it doesn't sound amazing amazing like it's not gonna blow your eardrums you know but it does have a very strong lossless DTS HD master audio soundtrack which is really cool and it has a great set of bonus features yeah audio com two audio commentaries one with the film historian and one with the director you got star crossed in the invasion interviews with actress Brooke Adams recreating the invasion interview with screenwriter uh, scoring the invasion which I love leading the invasion interview with actress Actor Art Hindle, writing the pod interview with Jack Finney, revisitors from outer space, or how I learned to stop worrying and love the pod uh, featurette, practical magic, the special effects pod uh, featurette, the man behind the scream, the sound effects pod. So, a lot of really, really, really good stuff when it comes to the bonus features. If you're a huge fan of filmmaking in general, and if you're also a fan of uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, this is a must own when it comes to just the 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 image quality of it the the kind of the the set that includes with it really nice artwork with reversible insert slip which is really cool and it comes with a lot of really cool bonus features so this is also another one i really recommend you guys pick up now we'll get to another controversial release that was restocked twice we got the release from december 7th 2021 native 4k with dolby vision that is hard target now i have the re-released version version i uh, i didn't read too much on to why it was cut off i think the audio um but it got recalled and it got re-released on 4k another movie that um i wasn't really expecting this to be in a kino lorber release it's a fun movie love me some jean-claude van damme and john woo it's very a fun movie i was expecting this to be like an mvd release or something like that but i'll take the kino lorber 4k because it looks fantastic i absolutely love this movie it's a classic you can't go wrong jean-claude van damme John Wu with a fantastic Dolby Vision Master looks fantastic sounds great too also the blu-ray itself if you're again future proofing yourself and you love this film it is a lot better than the other blu-ray the colors pop the colors look more rich and vibrant nicer not over contrasted but 
you do get a lot more color when it comes to just just normal colors when it comes to skin tones and that kind of stuff the blues the reds a lot of those subtle hues really come out when it comes to these when it comes to the Dolby Vision transfer as compared to the blu-ray even the standard blu-ray has better color contrast compared to that older release from I think 2014 or something now I think this also comes with the underrated what's it called the underrated unrated unrated international cut um, and I think those have a those look a tiny tad bit you know you can tell that those are the cut uh, footage but overall fantastic now this doesn't really have that much in the way of bonus features again you get you do get a commentary from hard boil to hard target an interview with John Woo Henriksen versus Van Dam interview with actor Lawrence Lance Henriksen uh, hard times and the big easy interview um, and gun Fu and Van damage interview with stunt coordinator theatrical trailer so you get if you're a fan of interview and like audio commentaries this is up your alley but it doesn't really come in the way of like like 90 minute documentaries on the making of that kind of stuff which is a bit of a bummer but you know it's a fantastic release uh you know controversial that it did get re-released and recalled and that kind of stuff but from this 2022 release that i got here this latest one uh looks fantastic and it's a great movie too so if you're if you're kind of uh you know when, you, when a lot of people kind of steered away from boutique releases being that you know the the film's themselves can tend to be a bit more high class uh, even though I think Kino Lober is really good when it comes to mixing the contemporary with the more artful films you know I know I know Criterion, they're a bit more on the uh, artsy-fartsy side. I know Kino Lorber, they, they release fantastic stuff and they have a great mix of both. So Hard Target, absolutely recommend fantastic movie if you if you love action films you love me some 80s action films john woo fantastic another one that i highly recommend if you can guys get if you can guys get this on the sale i don't know if this is on sale currently if it is you gotta pick it up now this is another controversial pickup because this did get a criterion release and i don't have the criterion release so i can't really compare the two but i've heard a lot of people say they prefer the criterion release i heard people say they prefer the kino lober release this was released on January 11th, 2022 with the native 4K transfer in Dolby Vision. That is the great escape. Uh, I know this did get a uh, Criterion Blu-ray release, which some people like, mainly because of the differences in color timing. I think this has a, a more warmer tone to it as compared to the Blu-ray, which has a more colder tone to it. Also, this is a bit darker. So some people, depends on what you like, what screen are you on, if you're projecting it, if you have Dolby Vision, some people aren't equipped with Dolby Vision, so it really depends. But on my 4K OLED TV, uh, this looks beautiful on it absolutely love this movie i can't really go much into it but you know i can't gush about this enough because i'll be here all day but it also comes with a shit ton of bonus features you got audio commentaries with filmmaker and historian steve mitchell and combat films what's it called steve mitchell and combat films american realism author uh stephen j rubin audio commentaries with director john sturges and actors james garner james coburn donald pleasance and david mccallum judd taylor and many crew members moderated by stephen j rubin i haven't i haven't watched the uh audio commentary but that sounds really cool return to the great escape making of featurette love it the great escape preparations of freedom featurette uh the flight of freedom featurette uh, uh, a standing ovation featurette uh the real virgil hilts a man called jones featurette a great escape the untold story documentary and the great escape untold additional interviews and theatrical trailers chock full of special features uh this is a blue uh, it's a 4k and its own dedicated uh special features blu-ray so that is why there is so many of them is because they're able to dedicate all that i think i'm pretty sure the movie is also on the blu-ray i'm not too sure i i didn't pop in the um i i mainly just watched the movies on the 4k because i was trying to binge all these movies uh and watch the 4ks to really do this review or this overview technically but again the spine uh, this doesn't have a, a reversible artwork i don't think but but um, absolutely fantastic release. Again, if you have the Criterion, this is a bit of a harder sell for you, but I didn't have that release, so I was more inclined to pick this up, and I got it used for a really good price. I think I got it for 15 bucks with a slip cover, so I had to pick it up. So The Great Escape on 4K Blu-ray. Let's get into the next release. Now, this next release was released on January 18th, 2022. This was one of the films that I would have never, ever, ever have bought if it wasn't for the fact that I was 
trying to complete all of the Kino Lorber 4Ks. Now, some people are like, why would you do that? You know, I only, I only buy movies I know I'm going to watch. But sometimes it's fun. You know, sometimes it's fun to collect movies and to, you know, have it in your collection and just to open your horizons. You know, I know some people hate blind buying. You know, they feel like they're wasting money. But for me, I really enjoy the, uh, the act of blind buying because I might discover a movie that I was never really intending on ever watching. But that is Some Like It Hot, a Billy Wilder film. Now, I haven't really seen much of Billy Wilder. And coming into this movie, I was like, oh, really? A Marilyn Monroe movie? But I love me some Tony Curtis and Jack Lemmon. Um, so I came in this with no expectations. And I was actually decently surprised. Fantastic movie. I actually really do enjoy this movie. You know, turning off my brain, my cynical brain, I actually really did enjoy uh, just the fun aspects of this movie. It is black and white, but it does look fantastic. Now, I also do believe this also does have a Criterion release again, which is a harder sell for most people because Criterion releases do look really good. But again, I'm not really here to talk about Criterion. I'm here to talk about Kino Lorber. I'm just talking about this release in general and why, you know, some people either stay away from it or they don't really see the point in upgrading this again. If you don't own it on Criterion, I think if you do own it on Criterion, this is a fantastic release because you do get that Dolby Vision and it looks fantastic. It really adds to that black and white because again, well, a lot of people, they kind of uh, dismiss uh, Dolby Vision or HDR when it comes to black and white films, but I feel like it brings out a lot more of the detail when it comes to, you know, when you, when you have either black, white, or gray, um, a lot more details are pulled out when you do have that Dolby Vision transfer. And that's why I really love black and white films on 4K with Dolby Vision is because you get a lot more of the detail this is a great release again this is a harder sell for for film bros i guess if you're like me and you kind of were on the edge i do recommend this it is a great film and it is a fantastic looking transfer uh, also it does come with a lot of bonus features again if you own the criterion you probably already used to all those bonus features but you know for 4k collectors it comes with the eight, um, audio commentary from a film historian justin mcbride uh author of author of billy wilder dancing on the edge audio commentary with paul paul diamond the son of a IAL Diamond uh, and screenwriters Lowell Gons and Babalu Mandel uh, featuring interviews with Jack Lemmon and Tony Curtis, the making of Some Like It Hot, the legacy of Some Like It Hot, the nostalgic look back on a documentary, Memories from the Sweet Sue's featurette, Virtual Hall of Memories featurette, Billy Wilder and Volker Schlondorf discuss Some Like It Hot, tribute to IAL Diamond and theatrical trailers. Again, really cool movie, fantastic, really fun, and it looks great too. This is a harder recommendation uh, based on your taste, but I think it was a really good uh, release. I would say it's a really good release. Now this is probably the hardest sell because whether you enjoy these type of films, I know a lot of people call this a boring film, film I don't call it a boring film because I was intrigued by the storytelling, by the writing, by the performances, but I can see why. It is definitely a slower film, you know, as an espionage drama. This was released on, oh, okay, it released on February 22, 2022, and that is the 4K release of Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Now, I remember when this first came out, like the movie itself, I'm like, what is this dad movie? This is a movie that dads like to watch. This and uh, Darkest Hour, but I I love Darkest Hour. Same with Monuments Men. I love Monuments Men. I don't know, maybe I'm a boring asshole and I start to like these more older dad movies, but it's also a huge cast. You got Benedict Cumberbatch, Gary Oldman, Benedict Cumberbatch, yeah, Gary Oldman, Colin Firth, Tom Hardy, Toby Jones, Mark Strong, and John Hurt. Holy shit. Now this is extremely, um, uh, not invigorating, but it's extremely captivating with his storytelling with its actual, um, you know, what the performances really hold this up because I feel like if you got the if this was casted if this was uh, wrongly casted I wouldn't have given two shits about the story but the the way that these the, these 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 actors are able to be so convincing and so convicted towards their goals and towards what they want to do it makes this movie more in uh, you know captivating is what I meant to say not invigorating <laughs> but again I can see how if people aren't fans of these actors and they don't really care about them and they don't really see the nuances in their their dialogue or in their performances i can see why they'd be bored out of this movie so this is a harder sell i personally enjoyed it looks fantastic too this is the first out of the modern movies um from the original 4k dsm and approved by cinematographer hoyt van hoytema 
Uh, this was done by Studio Canal. I believe they have their own 4K release. I could be wrong, but there is Dolby Vision on this. It looks really good too. So the fact that I really love this release, uh, people can be otherwise. It does come with a decent amount of bonus features. Again, not the greatest, but it does come with a bunch of interviews from the cast, audio commentaries, first look Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy feature red, deleted scenes, and theatrical trailers. So not the greatest in the way of bonus features. You're not going to get like a huge 90 minute making of documentary, that kind of stuff, but you will get a decent amount of stuff. And for how much it was, like 28 bucks, uh, brand new with the slip cover, I thought I might as well get it. Actually, I got that. Got that I think I got this uh, on sale during the Kino Lorber sale for like, I think it was $14.99. I could be wrong, but I got it for a really decent price with the slip cover. So I had to pick it up on 4K. Now, another movie I wasn't expecting myself to watch because I'm not really inclined on those kind of older black and white, yeah, yeah, she kind of movies, but I kept an open mind to it and I decided to pick it up mainly because it was on sale again and it came with the slip cover and you know uh, I just it's another Billy Wilder film and it said Academy Award winning picture best picture of 1960 this was released on March 8th 2022 uh, no Dolby Vision no HDR but it is native 4k and that is the apartment on 4k blu-ray this is a harder sell because no 4k uh, no Dolby Vision or no HDR uh, and it's in black and white so you are getting that uh, increase in uptick but I believe this also does have a criterion release which also still looks really good too so this is a really really hard sell but I love this release uh, I actually really did starting to, I really did open my eyes to this movie and start really enjoying the, these kind of performances those uh, North Atlantic North Atlantic accents and that kind of stuff it can be a bit grating on the ears but uh, I think I, I kind of opened up to it and it's a fun movie and it's it's a really good looking transfer this is a harder sell again because this also really doesn't come with that many bonus features it comes with audio commentaries from a film historian uh, and then another film historian and then it does come with a inside the apartment documentary and then it comes with a magic time the art of Jack Lemon featurette but on the way like it's a very slim looking uh, what's it called it's a little slim looking uh, bonus features kind of uh, thing usually they're like this big or they take up this kind of space but it's a bit, it's a bit thinner on this side but it is a fantastic film in my opinion and looks pretty good again a harder sell but you know i really like the auric and i really like the slip cover to it so uh this i wouldn't recommend to everybody but if you are a fan of billy wilder if you're a fan of that era of the 1940s 1950 oh there's 1960 never mind uh, but if you're a fan of that kind of era of classic kind of hollywood uh pre m pre mpaa i believe or pre-code no pre-code is 40s whatever but if you're a fan of that kind of classic hollywood style i do recommend this film and then a more recommendable film that i could say that this is go this goes for a lot more of a wider audiences. This was released on March 15th, 2022. It was supposed to come out on, Jan on uh, February 14th, 2022. Now, what's cool about this is the, the preview, uh, the theatrical cut, the preview cut, and the reconstruction cut are all on 4K, and that is Touch of Evil. Now, this is getting a lot harder to come by, so if you do see it, I highly suggest you pick it up. Fan freaking tastic, dude. Charlton Heston, Charlton, Charlton Heston, Charlton Heston, Janet Lee, and Orson Welles. I can't. What else can I say about it? And it's a fantastic, fantastic tray uh, of film. Uh, again, Fort Native 4K, Dolby Vision looks really good, sounds really good, and it comes with every single version of the film on 4k which is extremely extremely rare especially because sometimes 4k releases will get the theatrical release on 4k especially for this for an upcoming release we're going to be talking about where the fork the theatrical release will get on 4k but the director's cut won't get a 4k so but yeah touch of evil fantastic movie love the transfer again you're getting a lot of really cool stuff also the artwork is fantastic on this so uh if you can find this for a good price i don't know if this is on sale or not if it is on sale i would recommend this as one of my highest peaks i love this movie touch of evil again another older film 1958 black and white uh but you can't go wrong with three cuts of the film all on 4k they look really nice too so yeah touch of evil on 4k now the next release coming out on march 22nd 2022 canadian film by a canadian boy uh from the hometown hero david cronenberg david cronenberg and that is eastern promises 
This is one of my highest re uh, recommended film. Well, one of top ten. Love this film. Love this 4K. It's approved and approved and color graded by cinematographer Peter Shushitsky. Dolby Vision HDR uh, Vision tra Master. So looks great. It's a fantastic movie. I'm in the kind of minority where I actually do prefer David Cronenberg's more crime thrillers as opposed to his outright body horror kind of stuff. But this is a great uh, a great release from Kino Lorber. Really do enjoy the artwork on this one uh, again when it comes to the bonus features it's not you know chop full it does come with birthmarks a featurette with screenwriter Stephen Knight secrets and stories a featurette with David Cronenberg marked for life featurette with David Cronenberg two guys walking to a bathhouse featurette by with David Cronenberg Watts on wheels featurette with actress uh, new me Watts and uh, two theatrical trailers this is in color 101 minutes 384 uh, 3840 pixels by 2,160 2, pixels. It does look really good, um, you know, compared to that old Blu-ray that I have. This is a fantastic film. I can't really say much more about it than I recommend this Canadian film. One of the only Canadian films in the Criterion or the Kino Lorber collection. So, Eastern Promises. Can we please get a History of Violence? Kino Lorber, please. History of Violence, please. Now, this one is also another really, really good bang for your buck because not only does it come with one movie, it comes with two movies, and that is... Oh, it comes with three movies? Oh, shit. I, I, I don't remember this. Uh, that is released on April 19th, 2022. Unfortunately, no HDR. This is an SDR, which is a bit of a bummer because this would have looked... A lot, lot, lot more fantastic. It still looks great on 4K, but again, this is no SDR. Uh, so you're, you are getting uncompressed 4K image, but again, this is also another release that was uh, previously released by Criterion, which uh, Kino Lorber snagged the 4K rights to. And that is In the Heat of the Night, and it comes with three movies. So it comes with audio commentary from Norman Jewison uh, and in the cast or whatever. Uh, and then it comes with audio commentary from hit film historians. And then it calls, and then it comes with the "They Call Me Mr. Tibbs," the 1970 sequel to "In the Heat of the Night." And then it comes with the organization, the 1971 finale to the Poitier slash Tibbs trilogy. So it comes with three freaking movies for 29 bucks. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. Turning up the heat, making a uh, uh, movie making in the 1960s featurette, the slap heard around the world featurette, Quincy Jones breaking new sand featurette. So the the bonus features are two freaking movies two whole freaking movies so another movie that I really recommend again out of the trilogy the first movie is fantastic the other ones are decent but the first movie is like like a nine out of ten and then the second one is like maybe like a seven out of ten and the third one is like a five and a half maybe a six out of ten but for the price to price to value uh, kind of thing when it comes to this set with really cool artwork with a slip cover with three movies and a cool bunch of bonus features I highly recommend this. I think this is on sale for, I think, 17 bucks. So I highly recommend you guys pick this up if you are into kind of crime thrillers, uh, 60s and 70s kind of films. I highly recommend this. And you can't go wrong with Sidney Poitier and Rod uh, Steiger. So, yeah. And then the big boys. I remember when this came out, I had to pick it up no matter what, day one with the slipcover because the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly uh, came out. First pressing with slipcovers. Second pressing did not come with slipcovers. And these were released. Released on the same day on uh, May 31st, May 31st, 2022, we got the 4K releases for a uh, fistful of dollars and for a few dollars more. Now these slip covers are out of print. These are the original slip covers, by the way. And um, I love these movies. I had to get them when they first were announced. Uh, I didn't pre-order them. I got them as soon as they came out on store shelves. So I had to pick these up. Again, another movie where uh, people are decisive on the the color grading some people like it some people don't i personally really do enjoy these 4k transfers it's a lot better than my old blu-ray trilogy pack that i got from like 2009 or something or 2010 but uh these these 4k transfers look really good and i think they're re they're re-releasing these uh blu-rays with the slip covers uh, on with the 4K restoration, because I think the, the the last release that they did did not have a 4K restoration. At least I'm, that's what I think they are. They're also recolor graded uh, in more um, ways with the 4K as compared to that standard Blu-ray. But these do come with 4K and Blu-ray. So if you wanted to. 
future proof yourself uh, and they do come with uh, the decent amount not the greatest again for a fistful of dollars you do get two audio commentaries one from a film historian and one from a novelist and then you get an interview with actress Marianne Koch uh, a new uh, or cock <laughs> uh, then a new a new kind of hero featurette a few weeks in Spain Clint Eastwood on the experience of making the film so I guess it's an interview uh, you know three friends remember Sergio Sergio Leone uh, location comparisons then and now which I was really cool I, I, that was the first thing I checked on it looked really cool uh, image galleries outtakes radio spots trailers and more for that one and then for, for for a few dollars more you got two audio commentaries from novelist critic Tim Lucas and then from film historian Christopher Frayling on location with Almeria and Grandata with filmmaker Alex Cox which was really interesting because he made his own uh, what's it called he made his own western we got back from more Clint Eastwood remembers it for a few dollars more Trey Voci three friends remember Sergio Leone image galleries radio spots trailers and more I do really like these uh, 4K transfers. I've heard people say that they don't appreciate it. Again, it, it depends on the screen you want, and it depends on how much of a fan you are, because these were previously released, and I'm pretty sure you can get these for, I think, like six bucks on Blu-ray. For, for 4K, I think they're like 17. But again, if you're a fan of Spaghetti Westerns, if you're a fan of Clint Eastwood, these are like, these are necessities in your collection. So if you don't already own these 4Ks, or if you don't already own these movies in general, shame on you. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. And now this was a more interesting pickup that I got actually quite recently. This was a movie I wasn't expecting to get because, um, I don't know, I'm not the biggest fan of Jennifer Lopez and George Clooney. That is the release that was released on June 28th, 2022, and that is Out of Sight on 4K Blu-ray. Now this is a uh, 4K, uh, you know, native 4K master with Dolby Vision. So it does look pretty good. It looks pretty good. Uh, and it also is approved and color graded by the original cinematographer. So that is good. Um, it's a decent film. I think it's like a, it's a, it's a pretty, it's a solid seven out of 10. Pretty good crime comedy. I really did enjoy it. And this is lower on my recommendation list because I think this is like 123 minutes. It's pretty good. It looks fantastic. Uh, so it just depends on what your opinions are on George Clooney and Jennifer Lopez. Because in my opinion, they're not the greatest uh, actors in the world, but they do hold their own in this film. And and, um, you know, Ving Rhames, Don Cheadle, Dennis Farina, Albert Brooks, directed by Soderbergh. So it's a good film, you know, great looking 4K. So yeah, if you can find it on 4K with the slip cover, it's still really readily available. I was expecting, I wasn't expecting to get this with a slip cover, but I got it on Amazon for I think like 29 and it came with a slip cover. So yeah, out of sight on 4K Blu-ray. I can't really say much about it because I don't really have the most uh, heavy, heavy, heavy opinions on it, but it's a good release. So far, we haven't gotten any stinkers yet. Uh, next is, I think this is the first Kino Lober 4K that doesn't have the 4K banner on this. This was released on uh, June, again, June 28th, 2022, the same day as um, Out of Sight, and that is Killer's Kiss on 4K. Uh, again, I think this is this has a Criterion out there. I think this is like a, what's it called? It's in one of the other Stanley Kubrick um, releases, I think The Killing. This is a, a featurette on it. I did originally watch this on the Criterion channel um, it's a really short movie it's 67 minutes long it's a it's a smidge over an hour and it was really cheap I think I, I got this uh, brand new for $18 Canadian so I think it was like $14 $15 US this looks really good again Dolby Vision HDR master from a 4k scan of the original camera negative nothing and it comes with bonus feature the special features itself is listed as the transfer so it's a bit weird but again it just it's just a 4k uh, audio commentary with a film historian and it comes with a theatrical trailer so for the price it is it's pretty worth it you know and it's I think it's uh, I think it's Stanley Kubrick's third or second film he ever made I know he made fear and desire and then this but he made a few I think documentaries and war stuff so I don't know if you would call those films but I think as this as a thing he wrote and directed I think this is his second movie after Fear and Desire which I do have the Blu-ray for which is actually right here Fear and Desire which is also a Kino Lorb release which I got which is a really cool release I think they're remaking these are re-releasing this with a different transfer I think I have no idea but I heard something about that 
hopefully we can get a 4K of this because this is like like iconic. This is Stanley Kubrick's first ever film that he wrote and directed that kind of thing. You know, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? If we're being pulling straws and what you classify a film as, you know. But yeah, uh, a great little, you know, a great little kind of crime thriller kind of kind of movie, basically. Really do enjoy this. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this to everyone because again, it's a really short film. If you can get it for cheap, get it. But if it, if it's if they're trying to resell this for a lot more than I think 20 bucks, I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't go out of your way to get that because again, uh, this is a film that's really short. Uh, it's not the greatest Kubrick film. You can really see where he got his start from, but again, it's not up there with his greats. It's still a decent little film. Again, 67 minutes, black and white, but it does have a really nice looking transfer to it. And if you can get this for cheap, I highly recommend it. Really nice looking slipcover too. So yeah, that is the other release, Killer's Kiss on 4K Blu-ray. Next is another release from Stanley Kubrick. This was released over a, almost a month later on July 26, 2022. This does have another native 4K uh, transfer with Dolby Vision. That is The Killing on 4K Blu-ray. Now, this is a movie I highly recommend you guys pick up. This is, I think, the third or fourth. Uh, one of the earlier, another early Stanley Kubrick film. Now, this also does have a Criterion release that does look really good, too. It is a tad older. I don't think it is a 4K restoration. So this is definitely a better increase. Plus again, Dolby Vision Master. So this is one of those where I can confidently say this is definitely worth an upgrade if you, even if you do have the Criterion Blu-ray because it does have a new 4K restoration uh, for specifically for this. I think Studio Canal did it. I'm not, no, no, I don't think Studio Canal did it. But um, again, Dolby Vision, uh, more longer film. It's 84 minutes long. So again, not the longest film, but Sterling Hayden, it's one of the one of the OG heist films that kind of started it all. I know there's a few movies that, that came up before, but I think this perfected the kind of heist genre when it comes to that. A lot of twists, a lot of turns, a lot of really great performances, really good writing. Another early Stanley Kubrick joint with really cool looking artwork. Now I know there's some contention that people have said that uh, what's it called that that the lady was grabbing his cock. It's not. I think if, if, you, if you're you're pulling straws here, look at the the, the pocket seam is there. If it came down to it, his cock is right. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. His cock is here. He's, he's, he's on the ear, okay? I don't think he's... Gr she's not grasping him, okay? She's not gripping him. <laughs> I don't know what's going on anyways, but this is really cool artwork that was done. I don't know if this was commissioned or if this is like really early theatrical artwork for it, but it looks great. A Stanley Kubrick film, again, one of those releases that don't have the banner on the top, but uh, you know, which I really do enjoy. I love just pure artwork, but again, I do appreciate the kind of little 4K Blu-ray banner on it because it makes it more uniform with the other releases, but on the spine, it is the exact same as the other releases. So yeah, The Killing on 4K Blu-ray, another fantastic fantastic 4k release from Kino Lorber which I highly recommend if it's on sale if you can find it for a good price highly recommend you pick it up the other release came out on July 26th the same day okay the same day uh, July 26 2022 native 4k transfer with Dolby Vision now this is another hard sell because it depends on whether you like romance movies or drama movies the kind of slower movies that don't really have action in it you know compared to these other releases that we've been talking about and that is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Now, this was another film that I wouldn't have bought in a million years if it wasn't for my friend recommending it to me and the fact that I had this kind of decision that I wanted to buy every Kino Lorber 4K. I really enjoyed this movie. You know, all-star cast, Jim Carrey, Kate Winslet, Kirsten Dunst, Mark Ruffalo, Elijah Wood, Tom Wilkinson. It's a great movie. I love the premise behind it. Really great performances. And color graded by cinematographer Ellen Corras. Uh, so you got Brandon new 4k master with dolby vision so can't really go wrong with that and it comes with a bunch of bonus features audio commentaries memory light interview with cinematographer uh, a look inside eternal sunshine and spotless mind a step into the minds of the filmmakers in this behind the scenes look at the film a conversation with jim carrey and michael gondry the star and director reflect on their favorite onset memories or moments a conversation with kate winslet and michael gondry or Mich Mich michelle 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 the director, okay? <laughs> and then Inside the Mind of Director, Anatomy of a Scene with Sarah, Saratoga Avenue, uh, deleted and extended scenes, theatrical trailers, and more. So it comes with a lot of really good bonus features. It looks amazing. The film is shot beautifully. So if you are a fan of this movie, if you're open to rom-coms, not rom-coms, but romantic dramas, 
fantastic release, a fantastic movie. I do recommend this, depending on your taste in movies, obviously, because some people don't like those movies, which I I totally understand because I was in that same kind of ballpark, that same kind of point where you know those people are. But yeah, I kind of opened my mind to certain films, so I really did enjoy this, and it's a fantastic release. Now, this was my favorite, absolutely favorite release of last year. Another Stanley Kubrick joint, another short Stanley Kubrick joint with pure artwork. Absolutely love this movie. This was released on August 23rd, 2022, native 4K transfer with Dolby Vision. That is Paths of Glory. Holy shit. Now, this is a fantastic, fantastic release. One of my favorite movies um, ever, um, and I discovered it through this movie. You know, I know Terry Gilliam was in the Criterion on claws and he's like fucking paths of glory "Ah." anyways um so this does again have a previous criterion release which does look pretty good i still think that these this looks better because of the dolby vision you get a lot more of the um actual detail because it is a brand new dolby vision hdr master Uh, again but you know this was a i think this was a normal release so it did cost me about the same but it doesn't come with many bonus features the bonus features itself is the actual uh brand new 4k uh dolby vision hdr master with audio commentary by novelist critic Tim Lucas. I would have really, really loved a audio commentary with with Kirk Douglas himself. I don't know if that's in the Criterion release because um, I don't own that release, but that would be really cool just to hear Kirk Douglas, Kirk Douglas, reminisce about the you know, those times with Stanley Kubrick. You know, before this is right before Stanley Kubrick was like kind of held as one of the greats in uh, filmmaking and in cinema. You know, I think, you know, he was getting a lot of attention with his previous movies, but, um, you know, 1957, a really early Stanley Kubrick joint, extremely still holds up one of the best World War I movies when it comes down to that, one of the best war movies in general. A lot of really innovative special effects. Again, you know, on kind of the same list with All Quiet on the Western Front. It's up there. It's not as good as that, but I'd still say it's a fantastic release. Um, you know, great looking artwork on that too. So fantastic, fantastic. If you can get this for a good price with a slipcover, really, really cool. And what a fantastic transfer. Absolutely beautiful. Comes to life. Three-dimensional when it comes to its it's when it comes to its detail. So highly recommend this. If you can find this for a good price, if you can find this at all with a slipcover too, highly recommend it. My num- one of my number, you know, top five recommendations. Now, this was a hard story to find. Now, this was a release that came out came out September 27th, 2022, native 4K with Dolby Vision. That is in Bruges on 4K Blu-ray. When, when this first came out, I had no interest in it because I don't know. I mean, it's, it's your normal crime comedy film that, you know, that I wasn't really expecting to watch. But after watching Banshees of Inisherin, uh, made by the same guy, absolutely love that movie and then i had to pick this up on 4k unfortunately it wasn't available here in canada and even through the criteria of the kino lorber website it was only available to ship in the u.s and not in canada so i had to buy this on ebay so thankfully it did come with a slip cover too because i'm a real big real big uh hoagie about slip covers but um this is a fantastic movie I, I love this movie one of my favorite movies of one of my favorite movies of 2008 again looks fantastic shot really well great performances um cr- giving career best performances as irish hitman ray and ken uh in bruges absolutely love this movie again another movie that i really high rec- highly recommend next one is a movie i can't really recommend because i didn't really like this movie that much i knew i wouldn't like this movie coming in but I don't know, dude. It was like $28. Um, came with a slip cover. It's a Kino Lorber release. This came out on September 27th, so the same day. It looks good. It's a native 4K transfer with a brand new Dolby Vision Master, but there's no special features whatsoever. The only special features is a uh, director's commentary, but it's for a film I was like, mm, it's okay. I mean, it's uh, Robert Redford, Demi Moore, Woody Harrelson in Indecent Proposal. I knew I wasn't going to like this movie coming in, and then when I watched I'm like, yeah, I don't like this movie. <laughs> But it's a great placeholder for my, you know, Kino Lorber collection. I have to own it. If I'm going to buy every single Kino Lorber 4K, and I am a, I'm, a, I'm a slave. I'm a slave to the capitalist society, so that's why I picked this up. And, it's you know, there's great performances in it. You know, I can't say anything about the performances. It's just the, the, the actual storytelling I didn't really care for. The writing was a bit off, and it's just... 
it's whatever. As a release itself, I can't really recommend this. Again, it looks fantastic. And if you are a fan of this movie, it's a pretty good visual uh, experience. But again, literally the only bonus feature here is the uh, director's commentary. So you're not gonna, really going to get much out of this. And it's the same price as, say, Paths of Glory, which comes... Not Paths of Glory. It's the same... Well, I guess, yeah, the same price. But it's the same price as, like... As like in the heat of the night, which comes with, you know, three movies, a shit ton of bonus features, and it's a fantastic movie. So, I don't know. Sometimes, you know, this was the only stinker so far that I've had in this collection that I'm like, eh, it's a give or take. You know, if you're not on the kind of journey to collect every Kino Lober 4K, I wouldn't really recommend it, but had to add it to the collection. I had to, had to add it to the collection. I don't know what I'm saying. But this movie, this next release, is one that I had to pick it up because I love the movie takes place in Canada and you can't go wrong with the cast of Robert De Niro and Ed Norton. This came out in October 11th, 2022 and that has a native 4K restoration, native 4K transfer with Dolby Vision again. That is the score. Uh, Angela Bassett is also in it and Marlon Brando. I think this is Marlon Brando's last film before he passed away. Um, directed by Frank Oz. Uh, it's a great film. It's a great heist film. Uh, it's not going to be again like your generic heist film i think there's a lot more to it a fantastic score too uh it's about basically robert de niro and x kind of like he's given up on you know being you know doing heists and stealing shit i don't know and he wants to live the more simpler life with angela bassett in the nine in the early 2000s and he's just like dude i own a jazz club i make enough money you know doing this so i don't really need to do it but there's this kind of thing where it's like it's not even about the money it's about the excitement of the heist so when a young hot upstart edward norton comes along and says, hey man let's do another heist man we'll we'll see this like trident or something or it was like it was like an ancient uh not ancient but like a it was like a relic from like one of the the members of like a king or a queen of some 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 guy one of them one of them queens or kings but uh you know it takes place in Montreal. It's filmed really nicely, very noirish, very really stylistically shot, with a Dolby Vision HDR and a native 4K restoration. I absolutely love this movie. I can't recommend this enough. Fantastic story too. Uh, I can give or take with the artwork. It's a bit a bit generic. Feels like an early 2000s DVD, but I mean maybe that's what they're trying to go for. Uh, and then when it comes to the bonus features, it's decent. And you know it comes to the audio commentary with Frank Oz and cinematographer Rob Hahn. And then it comes with the making of the score, which I. I always love making of uh, featurettes, additional footage and theatrical trailers. It's a pretty good uh, release. I recommend it. Uh, if you're into Robert De Niro and Edward Norton, they they just feed off each other when it comes to the performances. Also, you know, being that this is Marlon Brando's last ever performances before he passed away, it's kind of like a kind of grail or a kind of staple within cinema, being that this is the last performance of Marlon Brando. You could really tell he's gotten really up there. So, yeah, the score on 4K Blu-ray, another fantastic release from Kino Lorber. Now this was another controversial release because this didn't come, uh, not all the cuts were on 4K as they did with um, other films that they had, you know, like Touch of Evil. Um, this came out on December 18th, not December, sorry, October 18th, 2022. Maria, yeah, 11, yeah. October 18th, 2022, sorry, because it's, it's 10 18. 10 is October. Uh, this is uh, native 4K again with Dolby Vision. That is Tropic Thunder on 4K Blu ray. I know this was a lot of people's really hyped releases, but when I saw this, I'm like, you know what? Eh, eh, do I want it? I don't know. The Blu-ray looks really good. Like the standard Blu-ray that came out like a decade ago looks pretty good. But this looks fantastic. I mean, the Dolby Vision HDR really, really highlights it because there's a lot, there's, there's some decent action scenes with explosions and stuff. And the fact that, you know, you can see a lot of the detail when it comes to, uh, I guess, Robert Downey Jr.'s blackface and the, just the schmutz and the, the dirt on people's faces. You can tell a lot from the detail. Uh, and but but fortunately the only the 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 only the theatrical cut is on 4k I think based on touch of evil a lot of people were expecting the director's cut to also be on 4k but unfortunately not only the 
theatrical trail the theatrical cut is only on 4k you get the unrated cut or i guess the director's cut but it's only on the standard blu-ray but again i'm pretty sure it's still the 4k restoration blu-ray i could be wrong on that one because i didn't really check it out i mainly just checked out the 4k discs and whatever bonus features it came with but again when it comes to bonus features not really much in the way of but you do get a hilarious commentary track with um, Ben Stiller, Jack Black, and Robert Downey Jr. And then you get another uh, audio commentary with co-producer uh, and then Ben Stiller and production designer Jeff Mann and again uh, co-writer Justin Thoreau which is who's in the he's in the atmosphere now and then cinematographer John Toll and editor Greg Hayden. You also get featurettes, uh, cast interviews, deleted extended scenes, alternate endings, and then theatrical trailers and more. Actually this does come with a decent amount of bonus features now thinking back on it. So if you're a fan of this, I recommend it. It's a fun comedy, but um, it does look really good too. It shows this is a harder one to sell because, again, if you're not the biggest fan of comedy films, this may not be up your alley, but it still works as like a funny satire on the Vietnam War and that kind of stuff. So I recommend it. I think it was a pretty good movie and it's a really good looking 4K release from Kino Lorber, Tropic Thunder. Now, this was a movie I was super duper hyped for, even though I guess two of the, you know, two of the people on this cast have been canceled, which was crazy. I was never expecting this to get a 4K release ever in my life. But the fact that I got a 4K release, you know, I'm thankful because I do really enjoy this movie. This was released on, um, again, December, uh, October 25th, 2022, native 4K restoration or transfer with Dolby Vision. That is Brian Singer's The Usual Suspects. I love this film. I don't know what to tell you. This is a fantastic film, and it looks amazing. Like this is a, this is a, a fantastic looking film. It's also the audio is great, uh, but it does come with audio commentaries from director Brian Singer and writer Christopher McQuarrie. Audio commentary by editor slash composer um, John Ottoman. Interview with cinematographer Newton Thomas Siegel. Interviews with John Ottoman. Five featurettes, deleted scenes, interviews, outtakes, gag reels, theatrical t uh, trailers, and TV spots. So it comes with a decent amount of fork uh, of. Features. Rats. Again, color graded, approved by some the original cinematographer from a 4K scan of the original camera negative. So that's a, usually a really good sign. I've gotten a lot of 4K uh, releases from other boutique uh, labels that don't really get you know 4k scans from the original camera negative sometimes it's the inner posits inner positives which don't look as good it looks great i really do enjoy this movie um you know even though the the ending was a bit spoiled for me i still do really enjoy this movie because it's that that quote is everywhere the uh, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was making people believe he did not exist that was Woo! Fantastic film. I highly recommend this again. Probably my top ten uh, movies, uh, almost of all time, but definitely in this uh, in this uh, collection, this Kino Lorber collection. Now, this is another movie I'm not the biggest fan of, based on what what it's what it's commentary on, especially with nowadays, you know. But it's still a decent. It's a, it's a decent. It's a decent. Uh, you know, slasher, crime, horror, thriller, whatever you want to call it. That is Brian De Palma's Dress to Kill. This was released on uh, this uh, October 25th, 2022. Uh, native 4K restoration. No Dolby Vision, no HDR, which is a bit sad again. So that's why I, I put it a bit notch. I, I do a, a couple notches uh, below, you know, when it comes to ranking. But it does come with a lot of bonus features. Um, it does come with audio commentaries by film critic and author. Uh, strictly business interview with actress Nancy Allen. Killer Frames interview with uh, associate producer. Producer and production manager Fred C. Caruso, an intimate, an imitation of life interview with actor Keith Gordon, Symphony of Fear, a 2012 interview with producer George Litlo Lito, Dressed in White, 2012 interview with actress Angie Dickinson, um, the making of Dressed to Kill, a 2001 uh, documentary slashed Dressed to Kill, 2001 featurette, unrated, R-rated, and TV-rated comparison, 2001 featurette, archival audio interviews with actors Michael Caine, Angie Dickinson, and Nancy Allen, and theatrical trailer, TV, radio spots, and more. Uh, so it does come with a lot of bonus features, but again, if you have the original Criterion release of it, it's a bit of a harder sell. Now, this also, I think, has a, what's it called, reversible artwork that looks really cool, but... You know, uh, I mean, it, it's, 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 a, it's a good release. Again, it really depends on your taste. 
I wasn't the biggest fan of this film. I had to have it in the collection because um, I just I don't know. I'm, I'm a I'm a cuck. I'm a Kino Lorber. I'm a Kino cuck. But again, it looks really good. Again, very sad it doesn't come with Dolby Vision because it would have looked really really good. But it still does look fantastic with that 4K. But again, it's a harder sell based on the fact that the Criterion Blu-ray also looks really good. But again, really good release. I I can't recommend it myself because I'm not the biggest fan of this movie. But again, for what it is for the visual aspects for the for the performances is a pretty good release now this is a movie i absolutely love and that is the this, this is when the kino Lorber was doing those uh, more clint eastwood releases this was released on november 8th 2022 native 4k with dolby vision that is clint eastwood in escape from alcatraz don siegel i think right don siegel love me some don siegel no one has ever escaped from alcatraz and no one ever will so yeah absolutely love this film again hdr dolby vision remastered by paramount pictures uh so this looks really great absolutely love this movie there's nothing more i can really add if you're a huge fan of clint eastwood don siegel if you love this movie this is a no-brainer you got to pick this up on 4k blu-ray same with this next pickup and that is was released on november 22nd 2022 another native 4k with dolby vision that is high plains drifter a kind of spin on the the normal uh, I guess uh, Western. This has more mythological, mythological, more mysterious aspects to it. Uh, I'm not going to spoil what it is, but it's more deeper than just the average, you know, action Western movie, even though you do get a lot of really cool action stuff. A lot of really cool uh, bonus features, again, directed by Clint Eastwood himself, but it does come with audio commentaries with film historians Steve Mitchell and Nathaniel uh, Thompson. Audio commentary by filmmaker Alex Cox, which I really need to get to. Lady, Lady Vengeance, interview with actress Mariana Hill. Hell to, pay, Hell to Pay, interview with actor Mitchell Ryan. The Barber of Lago interview with actor William O'Connell. Man Named Eastwood, a vintage promo in HD. Trailers from Hell with Edgar Wright and jo Josh Olsen, which would be really cool to watch. Poster and image gallery, which I really don't care for. And then TV spots, radio spots and theatrical trailers for this release. Fantastic. I'm super hyped to get those bonus features. I saw the 4K of it. Looks pretty good. Uh, I'm moving a bit iffy on. It's not my most favorite uh, Clean Swim movie. It's not in my top 10, but it's still a pretty good release. And I love this artwork on it. Looks really cool. It looks great too, so uh, if you're a fan of Clean Swim, if you're a fan of High Plains Drifter, I, I really highly recommend. I high recommend you uh, pick this up now another movie that is hard for me to recommend but it, it looks good and it's 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 a fun film this was released on again november 22nd 2022 again native 4k dolby vision so it does look great it's just it's it's a comedy film and you know depends on what your taste on on comedy and that is mystery men on 4k again it looks good it really has that three-dimensional kind of feel to it uh and then you know the lighting situations and the colors look fantastic on this um when it comes to special features, there's audio commentaries, uh, making of Mystery Men with director Kinka Usher. I'm a superhero mother, the costumes of Mystery Men with designer Marilyn Vance. Inside Champion City, the effects of Mystery Men with VFX supervisor Todd Tucker. Disco is Life. You know, I can't. I can go on and on about the special features, but there's a, there's a pretty decent amount of special features. So if you again, if you are a fan of this, highly recommend it. Uh, as just a normal, if you're just a person getting into Kino Lorber and if you haven't seen this movie, I'd say there's a lot more others that I'd recommend before this, but it's a pretty good film and it's a pretty fun film and it's a pretty uh, good looking transfer. Now this one was a really hard pain in the ass to pick up because it wasn't really available in Canada when it first came out. But then, you know, as time went by, I was able to finally pick this up on eBay, not eBay, but on Amazon. And that was released on November 22nd, 2022, native 4K with Dolby Vision. That is the taking of Pelham 123, the original one, not the remake with Denzel Washington and Tom Travolta, John Travolta, uh, the better one with Walter Matthau, Robert Shaw, Martin Balsam, and Hector Elinzando. I really did enjoy this film. This is absolutely fantastic. I mean, you can't go wrong with Walter Matthau and Robert Shaw in the same movie together. Really, really fantastic. And it comes with a lot of really good bonus features. Audio commentaries with film historians. Audio commentary with actor, filmmaker Pat Healy and film programmer, historian Jim Healy. The making of Pelham 123 Vintage Featurette. 12 Minutes of Mr. Gray. Cutting an action interview with editors. Um, the Sound of City interview with composer. Image galleries, theatrical trailers, TVs, and radio spots. It's a great release and it looks fantastic in 4K. 
and it's a really good film so I highly recommend it and then the next release is another really hard sell because it's it's not like an action-packed movie it's more of a drama and that is was released on December 20th, 2022 with native 4K in Dolby Vision. That is nobody, Nobody's Fool, Paul Newman. I really did enjoy this film. This, this was one of those comfort movies that you just kind of watch and you're just like, wow. 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 What a, what a film, you know, so... Again, but again, it doesn't really come with much in the way of bonus features. It comes with the audio commentary and two interviews. So this is a harder recommendation uh, for just people who are, you know, just looking for a good 4K. Again, it looks great. You know, original uh, 4K, original camera negatives. Uh, this, uh, this, come with, uh, this does come with Dolby Vision. So I do also recommend this one. But again, it's not on my top recommendations, but it's still a good release. All right, y'all, we're on the home stretch. How we doing? Okay, okay. <laughs> Next is a movie that I can recommend to the ends of the earth. This is a more recent release. This came out January 24th, 2023, native 4K restoration with Dolby Vision. Death Wish, holy garbanzo beans. Now, this was a movie I wasn't expecting to get released by Kino Lorber because the second Death Wish movie was released by Vinegar Syndrome. So I was assuming, which I have right here, and this is also a this is also a fantastic release, which I highly recommend. But um, yeah, I wasn't expecting Death Wish to be released by Kino Lorber, and when it did get released, I bought it day one, and it looks absolutely so freaking lootly fantastic. Again, doesn't really come with much in the way of bonus features, but as a film, as a staple, you know, extremely legendary film with a bunch it was spawned a bunch of remakes. Charles Bronson at his finest. And it looks fantastic. New Day, Dolby Vision HDR Master with a 4K scan, the original camera negative. I can't really go on about how fantastic this looks, especially for those those city shots in the 1970s. Are you kidding me? It looks beautiful, and it's a fantastic film. If you even if you're a slightest fan of action and crime thrillers, highly recommend you pick this up. If it's on sale, this should be in your cart because it's such an iconic action crime thr uh, film that I feel like it should be in everyone's collection. Great film. Now this one is a bit of a hard sell because not many people might like it. I know a lot of people really love the remake of this film and some people might find it slow. I really did enjoy this because I just love, love me some Michael Caine and that is a release from uh, January 31st, 2023, native 4K Dolby Vision release of The Italian Job on 4K Blu-ray. I really did enjoy this uh, release and this film. It looks beautiful, looks fantastic, and it does come with a lot of really good bonus features. Audio commentaries with a screenwriter, Matthew Field, uh, who is the author of The Making of The Italian Job, comes with the film audio commentary by producer Michael Dealey and Matthew Field. And then the, there's this documentary called The Great Idea, 2002 documentary, Self-Preservation Society 2002 documentary, Get a Bloom and Move On 2002 documentary, Mini Adventures 2009 featurette, uh, the deleted scenes, an optional audio commentary by Matthew Field in a theatrical and re-release trailers. Again, another fantastic release that looks fantastic. Again, this is a harder sell because for those who are expecting this film to be like the... Um, the uh, what's it called? The uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, wait, well, why why is his name not popping up? Uh, Marky Mark Mark Wahlberg movie. It's definitely not that. Um, it's a bit more. It's a bit for the older fellas. It's a bit for a, a more mature taste. Uh, even though this, I can see why people say this is slow and it's a bit boring. It takes a while for it to get to get cooking. But I just love I love really really good performances and this really captivated me through beginning to end. But again, I can see why people can see that this is really a slower film. It's a tad it's a tad long in the tooth, being only 99 minutes long. It, it, it drags it drags a bit but uh i really did enjoy it i like those kind of films but uh um, yeah with a lot of really good bonus features if you are a fan of the original italian job you owe it to yourself to pick this up on 4k because it looks absolutely beautiful this is one of the films that just blow the blu-ray out of the water and if you don't already own this movie on on Blu-ray, and if you do enjoy Michael Caine and some Italian job, I highly recommend you pick this up. So the last, latest release on 4K, this came out 
what's it called? This came out on February 28th, 2023, native 4K Dolby Vision Master. That is Marathon Man on 4K. This was a son of a bitch to get. I was able to get one of my friends to pick this up for me. Shout out Kyle. Thank you so much for getting this to me because I wouldn't have been able to get this on myself. And it literally just came out in Canada like a week ago, which is insane because this came out in February and we're in April. So what's going on? Kino Lorber sometimes gets delayed a lot here in Canada. So to order it from the actual United States and to get it to me, absolutely uh, gracious gracious guy thank you Kyle but love this movie I mean Dustin Hoffman Lawrence Olivier Roy Scheider a 4k blu-ray from the 70s oh dude whenever I see it's a 4k Dolby Vision Master from a film made in the 70s you know it's gonna look beautiful this looks beautiful it's a fantastic film this is my top easily uh, my top 10 highest recommendations I think I'll do a my favorite 4Ks, but I think I'll, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to say, you know, I know Mad Max on there, but again, there is a anthology release out there, but Marathon Man on 4K. Those were all of the Kino Lorber 4K Blu-rays that have been released from its inception to recently. I know Rawhead Rex is coming out next week. I'm going to take a look at the digital bits releases for Kino Lorber. That's what I've been using to keep track on the dates of when these come out. But let's talk about some of these upcoming Kino Lorber 4K releases that really pique my interest. We're going to talk about all of these. We are going to talk about all of these and we're just going to, I'm just going to comment on some of these. So, uh, so we got Tropic Thunder. We got Nobody's Fool, Death Wish. Yeah, so Rawhead Rex coming out soon. Uh, one of the more traditional horror films that are coming out from Kino Lorber. It looks really interesting. Has cool artwork on it. And I've seen a, a bit of the trailer. I know this is a Studio Canal 4K transfer that was originally released on Blu-ray, which looked really cool. And I'm really excited for this to come out. It's, it's, it was supposed to come out February 21st, 2023. But it's coming out next week on the a month of, on the week of April, I guess... 15th 14th i don't fucking know but then uh we're all we're also gonna get 12 angry men and serpico released on the same day these are both getting native 4k restorations with dolby vision so that's gonna be absolutely fantastic love both of those films really excited for serpico really excited for 12 angry men again 12 angry men did have a criterion release and kino lober also previously released that on blu-ray but i'm really excited for that dolby vision that's gonna look absolutely mwah, 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 beautiful very fantastic uh and then again serpico i really don't like that artwork that they chose for that kind of like digital staticky picture of just uh al pacino but you know whatever uh and then we got the longest yard on 4k this is getting again dolby vision native 4k which i'm really excited for it's one of the only kind of football movies that i really do enjoy um but yeah, and then we got The Light of the Hunter, which I'm going to force myself to rewatch because when I first watched it on the Criterion channel, I wasn't really the biggest fan of it. It was a bit weird. It had really different tones to it, whether it was like a horror movie, uh, kind of like not a slasher movie, but like a, like a horror movie. And then it turns kind of this lovey-dovey sibling, like, oh, siblings will be there for you. And then the people start singing and stuff. It, it was weird. But now that I'm aware of those kind of tonal shifts in the storytelling, I feel like I'll be more susceptible to really like this film because a lot of people love this a lot of my mutuals on instagram and my fellow blue tubers love this movie so i'll have to give this another chance uh, and then to live and die in la don't really know much about this but um it is coming with a negative four native 4k restoration with dolby vision same with stalag 17 world war ii film looks really cool native 4k dolby vision and then this is my this is one of my most anticipated releases bad lieutenant native 4k dolby vision that's coming out soon absolutely love this film abel ferrara so excited for this to come out then we got cujo uh coming soon confirmed by kino lorber native 4k dolby vision all that good stuff lock stock two smoking barrels i'm really excited to check out because i have the original blu-ray and it doesn't look too good so i'm really hoping that this new 4k with dolby vision will really spruce up the film then we got face off which uh, John Woo, another John Woo film, really excited to check out. Uh, I don't remember liking this movie, but I was a kid when watching this movie, and I was kind of tainted by Nostalgia Critic. But um, again, Dolby Vision HDR, uh, native 4K looks cool. Sudden Death, native 4K Dolby Vision, that's really cool. You got the original Invasion of the Body Snatchers, again, Dolby Vision native 4K. And then, crazily enough, freaking uh, Kindergarten Cop on 4K, really weird, but uh, sure, I, I fuck with it. I I'll let him cook. 
And then we got Staying Alive, the sequel to um, the first movie, which I actually prefer better than the first one. Coming soon. I think that was directed by Stallone, right? Could be wrong. Thunderbolt and Lightfoot, uh, native 4K Adobe Vision. Three Days of the Condor, uh, 4K. You got Bug on 4K, Brick 4K, Red Dragon, which I'm super hyped for. Uh, I got The Train, Leviathan, Ronin, Manchurian Candidate, Crybaby, and Manhunter, which is to be announced, but for the most part, I feel like we're, we should expect it. But again, what's crazy is that Keen, uh, Criterion actually announced that it's gonna be on their channel. So I don't know who's releasing that, but yeah. So those were the upcoming releases. Those were all the Canelobra 4Ks. Thank you for sitting through this behemoth of a video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Let me know down below what is your favorite Kino Loba 4K release? Again, please have yourself a good day, night, evening, afternoon, morning. Whenever you're watching this, please stay safe. God bless and cheers. Peace, love, long physical media. Until I see you guys next time, have a good one. My SD card's about to get full. Peace out.